Most of those meme stock investors have lost mm -hmm. large amounts of money, you know, chasing these ideas. I mean, Jim Chanos almost repeated what Ken Griffin said a couple of days ago. He said, sad story, a lot of people lost a lot of money trading the meme stocks, but the small difference in between is that Jim Chanos actually was long on the ape, which simply was delisted <laughs> and later converted, of course. But he was short on AMC. He didn't mention that he was one of the people who are actually going along trading these stocks, right? Funny. This is why I'm not surprised he's not excited to see the dumb money movie. He might see someone else's playing himself or simply getting reminded that he invested in the ape shares. And maybe I'm mistaken of his cost basis previously, but uh, I think I might heard that the cost basis on the ape was around seven dollars. Might be wrong, but if that was the case, remember, ape was converted into AMC shares in a fraction of the price. And businesses generally find their their true value over time. I mean, just look at the meme stock, you know, run mm. up and, and now disaster uh, from 2021 to today. And, and there was no price too high to pay for some of these stocks because right. they had a short position. And ultimately, most of them have, have come crashing down to earth. We'll get back to that that specific one in a second. But uh, first, I want to ask about um, the, I guess, rising short seller in the market right now, Nate Anderson and Hindenburg. He's been big bets against Adani, um, or rather, he's said very public negative things about Adani, Icon Enterprises. You know, on, uh, do you do you see eye to eye with some of the calls that he's made? I uh, look. I think uh, uh, Nate and Hindenburg have done great work on a number of names, Nicola and, and others, and uh, you'd, uh, you'd be wise to at least hear what they have to say, even if you don't agree with it. Um, if it's well-researched and, and like anything, you know, s stock prices um, are, are opinions based on facts. And, and so at the end of the day, it's essential for a marketplace, whether they're, they're positive facts or negative facts. And if you're a good investor, you know, it behooves you to, to, to basically hear both sides of any story. We'd be remiss if I didn't ask for an update from you on Tesla. Shares up 124% <laughs> this year. Yeah, uh, we are uh, we are short Tesla. We remain short. Uh, it's one of our one of our 44 positions that we have. Um, look, a Tesla is is in many ways, I think, epitomizes this bull market. It's a hopes and dreams stock. Um, it's trading at 75 times earnings, which aren't growing anymore. Um, it, it looks like revenues are going to be challenged in terms of growth. So it, it's now, again, an AI story or a robo-taxi story or a battery story or a robotic story. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. And it reminds me a lot of Cisco back in 1999 and 2000, wow. where Cisco was a networking company. Tesla is a car company. But Cisco was going to get into everything else uh, that had anything to do with the Internet. And people put a higher and higher multiple on it. And ultimately, Cisco did okay, but the stock price you know, dropped 90%. I'm going to do a quick lightning round of some stuff we, that has been reported that you are, have, are or have been short recently. Just have me yes or no if, uh, if you're still short. <laughs> <laughs> Digital Realty Trust? Uh, we are short the data centers. S SL Green Realty? Uh, SL Green is, uh, we are short commercial real, real estate. estate. Okay. <laughs> Tesla, you said. Sunrun, you, you said. Uh, the uh, the uh, solar leasing uh, companies, I've called them uh, science projects. They're, they're absolutely hysterical. They lose hundreds of millions of dollars, huge negative free cash flow. And getting back to our early conversation about metrics, they report uh, rather than, than a regular P&L, which would be embarrassing. They report these net present value calculations based on the, the panels they put up on people's roofs. And it's absolutely hilarious the way they do it. And uh, I think investors are going to you know, find out the hard way about it. All right, Jim, we're going to spend the last 40 seconds with you getting your thoughts on what you're watching, what you're streaming, what you're doing, and uh, what you're seeing at the movie theater. New movie out, Dumb Money. <laughs> it's got Pete Davidson in it. It's got Seth Rogen in it. Uh, are you going to see it? Have you seen it? It's all about meme stocks. I, uh, I, I, I told one of your colleagues earlier, I, I don't see the need since I, I live, uh, I live dumb money five days a week um, <laughs> in, in the marketplace. So uh, at some point, I'm sure I'll see it. I, I you know, I, I think it celebrates the, the meme stock investors winning over, uh, you know, Wall Street and the, and, and the evil hedge funds. The sad thing is, is that most of those meme stock investors have lost 
large amounts of money, you know, chasing these ideas, because as we pointed out, uh, a lot of these companies came crashing down to earth, uh, and and in some cases have already gone bankrupt. In the beginning, I said that what he actually said sounded very, very similar to what King Griffin said. Why I said that? Well, think about it. He said that individual investors beat the hedge funds, beat the evil hedge funds and the Wall Street. In the end, they lost money. This is a sad story. But once again, people will be asking a lot of questions how he identified who lost and who actually win this trade when people, some of them didn't sell or majority of them didn't sell. How these people lost when they're still holding and expecting different prices. Again, if it's not over, you cannot make the final decision and draw the line and make the conclusion. He also said something very interesting. He said, in the end, each and every company on the stock market will find its fair value. And this is where the big example started. He gave an example with the meme stock. He said that, look, where there are enough people to buy at the higher prices, you will get higher prices. But these higher prices are coming with higher short interest. You have a higher short interest, drawing a lot of attention, having people buying into the particular potential short squeeze. This is why he highlighted that finally the stocks find the fair value and potential fundamental value, which, as I mentioned, no one is talking about short squeeze on the media anymore. The only topics that they will be discussing for GameStop and AMC, it is only the fundamental value and this will be the story moving forward. All these people will make you to forget what you actually join in this particular trade. Why did you invest in these companies? In the end, a lot of people might actually be put mentally in the position that break even or having some small gains was the main idea. Speculations, speculations, speculations. Let me know what you guys think about this. And of course, let me know what happened to Jim Chano's position in Ape. Did he sold prior to the conversion? Did he actually hold? And of course, if he hold, the question is how happy he is. Having some AMC shares, fraction of the actual value.